Ladies and gentlemen, um, 18 years ago, you can sit down if uh, you're just standing because you're being kind to your family members, you're okay, very good. There's 26 new faces in here, so I'm not quite sure uh, who, who's who yet, so that's okay, I'm not confused now, everybody's sitting. Boy, you got a lot of gentlemen, gentlemen representatives out there, I'm very, very impressed. Ladies and gentlemen, 18 years ago, on opening day, uh, legislators, along with their friends and families, uh, battled through a severe ice storm. Uh, the state of Connecticut was facing a huge budget deficit, and the banking and real estate industries were in shambles. I would guess I would say that it's deja vu all over again. Uh, but 18 years ago, like today, uh, there was enthusiasm, a happiness of being uh, sworn in again and being newly, newly elected. Uh, that enthusiasm, as of to, as today, also was in the air. It was my first opening day, and I was in awe when I walked into this chamber and took my seat and admired uh, the beauty of and the architecture of this historic room. And it's been an honor, quite frankly, serving with so many legislators. Uh, over all those 18 years. And certainly with all of you uh, that I've been the pleasure of serving with over the last four years in this room today, I thank you too. I want, you, I want also to thank you personally for serving your state with honor and distinction. And I want to thank you all for your friendship, uh, the memories that I will leave with uh, uh, today and uh, as I... Uh, a depart uh, as being your speaker. You know, of course, of course, all the accomplishments we achieved together. Although I know that you face a very challenging session, I know you are all up to the task. Let me say to Governor Rell, I want to personally thank her for her friendship and her willingness to work in a bipartisan manner. Uh, our legacy, that means I'm talking about the House and the Governor, is one we can be proud of. The last four years, we've had four balanced budgets and four surpluses, a $1.4 billion rainy day fund in two years without raising taxes. taxes. That legacy uh, that we work together bipartisanly is one we should be all proud of. I say to you, Governor, and of course this legislature, uh, and this wonderful body, a job well done. I'd also want to make it perfectly clear to the citizens of Connecticut that this governor and this legislative body did not create the fiscal problems that we face today. But they have the responsibility, you have the responsibility to resolve it, and I know you will resolve it. There's no doubt in my mind that you will do that. To all the newly elected legislators today, my legislative career ends and yours begins. Today is a day of ceremony and certainly a celebration, a day that you will be sworn in and just were uh, recently sworn in, which is kind of a wonderful thing to happen to all of you. And uh, as a legislator representing your city and towns and all of you should be honored uh, for your achievement. Uh, but I also must say tomorrow the work begins. I never imagined my first day that someday I'd be Speaker of the House. I bet you if there was bets in the room, Nobody would have won that bet, including me. I hope uh, that someday one of you that are sitting here, a newly elected a representative, uh, have the chance in the same honor that I've had of walking in here 18 years ago and then becoming uh, the Speaker of the House, uh, which is such an honor that to all of you uh, gave me the privilege of having. I ask all the freshmen, and I've said this to many of the representatives before, but all of you, just a little word of wisdom I hope you take with you, that never forget where you come from, never forget um, why you are here, and more importantly, never forget the family that sacrificed while you spend time in this chamber. To Senator Williams and Senator Looney, I want to thank uh, those gentlemen for all the battles that we won together and for the people of Connecticut. Record investment in health care and education and a roadmap to Connecticut's economic future and by investing uh, close to almost $4 billion 
into the new railroads and bridges for our state. Thank you, Senator McKinney, for being the worthy opposition uh, and a friend and assuring that checks and balances will always be there in the democratic process. But again, it is the people in this chamber that I thank the most. My heart will leave here proud of being your friend and colleague. To my minority leader, Larry Cafaro, thank you so much, Larry, for your passion. And of course, thank you for your sense of humor on days when we needed it most. And of course, the most important thing, our friendship, uh, that I know will last uh, long into our golden years. To my wonderful, great, close friend, Denise Merrill, my appropriations chair, and now your majority leader, I thank you so much, uh, Denise, uh, for your hard, dedicated work. Uh, we all know what a great job you do, and I certainly admire uh, your intelligence, and your frankness, and you truly are a gem. And I mean that from the bottom of my heart. I have no doubt, ladies and gentlemen, that uh, Majority Leader Merrill uh, will be a magnificent Majority Leader. And I know that uh, I'm proud of her, and I know all of you will be too. And now, of course, To the man that we are about to name, the next Speaker of the House of Representatives, Chris Donovan. All right. And I know, uh, I know Chris is probably watching or listening in the back, so sir, uh, Chris and I, we probably spent more time together over the past four years uh, than we have with our own families. And I truly call you, Chris, my brother in arms. Chris Donovan is a good man. He's honest and he has integrity. And so do all of you in this room. You should be proud to have him as your leader. A person that any of us would like to have in the trenches when times get tough. Chris is also a very loyal and humble servant of the people and will fight, I know, till his death. There is no doubt in my mind. To his last dying breath, trying to make the lives of Connecticut workers the poor, and all the citizens of Connecticut a safer and more decent place to live. Representative Donovan will leave a legacy that will make the families of Connecticut better educated, better housed, and certainly more healthy. I know, ladies and gentlemen, you are in good hands. My last comment is again, let me thank all of you. <laughs> Almost made it. I want to thank all of you for the honor of being your speaker for the last four years. 
Thank you, my friends. Thank you. Thank you guys.